Hello, I'm Rol and welcome to Speaking of Everything. And with me I have the former Minister of Justice, uh, this is Anna Richardson. How are you doing? I'm grateful. Thank you for having me on your show. I'd like to say greetings to your viewers and it's a pleasure to be back. Well, good to have you in the program. We also have listeners. We also read you to us. So don't yes. forget our listeners. And your listeners as <laughs> well. Those tuning in and, and any form and means. Right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> How has it been? Because you've been Minister of Justice for a full term, right? Four yes, years. Yes, I was the Minister of Justice for four years, 2020 until May 2nd, mm -hmm. 2024. Um, and just after taking um, my graceful step away from the position, I, I allowed myself to have 60 days of vacation. 60 days. So, yes. Time. <laughs> Specifically 60 days. It was so good. Uh -huh. um, just allowing myself to unwind and reconnect with life again, you know, mm -hmm. because having committed myself four years, uh, dedicated to be able to bring the results that we have within my administration mm -hmm. was a lot. Um, it, it's, it's an experience that I am truly grateful for, but I needed that downtime and I made, I made the most of it. And in between time, we learned that we're going back to the polls. So mm -hmm. just after uh, coming out of um, my 60-day vacation, the yeah. next day was postulation day. Wow. <laughs> were you surprised? So here, yes, I was. I, I was surprised to know that we were going back to the polls so quickly. Um. Um, although, of course, you know, we had our, our, our doubts about the stability of, of the administration, just being totally honest. Um, but I did not anticipate it being um, so quickly. Yeah. Nevertheless, here we are. <laughs> As a former Minister of, of Justice for Simran, how do you feel about the, the current violence on yeah. the island? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, I, I want to express my condolences to the family and friends and loved ones of, of, of the deceased. It is really, really senseless. Um, we do not know the specifics, and even when I was Minister of Justice, I was mm -hmm. very careful not to um, make any sorts of comments towards any type of incidents that took place until the facts right. came about. So I'm, I'm not going to, to venture into what I assume uh, or believe or what the sentiments are that have been spewed thus far uh, within our community that this is. However, we are in a political season and, and I've heard words thrown around here and there. Um, this is not us. This is not how we do uh, politics, if, if indeed that is the case. But again, I think we should allow ourselves to, to see where this goes once the in investigation takes its, 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 its course. Um, but uh, when it comes to the speaking of violence generally, um, we are really trending in a very negative direction and have been for some time. And I must say that within law enforcement, there are a lot of efforts to be able to combat this. Um, you know, the, the criminal world is a very large and sophisticated, whether we would like to recognize it as such or not, it is very large and it is very sophisticated. And they are always trying to find ways and means to be able to get around law enforcement. And one of the, the things that I learned as Minister of Justice is that, you know, criminals operate or do not operate with, with laws. The law enforcement has to operate with laws. So we have a lot of work to do as well in evaluating ourselves and evaluating our laws to see if they give our law enforcement um, authorities and, 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 and departments mm -hmm. the, the support and leeway they need to be able to be as effective as we need them to be um, mm -hmm. as time evolves. So um, in the pursuit um, to, to, to Parliament, in this parliamentary election, of course, um, I have postulated myself on the slate with the ambition as well to, to be a part of um, the people, the decision makers, or maybe even the executive body that does something about it, you know, supporting our, our, our men and women, um, both on the front line and those who give the support, um, the leadership and, and guidance um, and support that we need to be able to get our law enforcement uh, pushing that the way that we would need them to to make our communities as safe as possible. But, you know, compliments to the, the efforts that they are busy with, with the resources that they do have. Um, but um, the violence within our, our communities, is it's a trend that we really have to find a way to curb. Uh, as a Minister of Justice for four years, mm -hmm. anything you want to complete if you get a chance to go back because 
we can never do everything in four years. That is absolutely true. Um, thanks for asking. One of the first things that I really believe in is education. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it, it, it is known that our law enforcement uh, body in itself requires uh, certain certifications, qualifications, and refreshers. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a facility or an institution currently on the island that allows for that in all the departments. And I always say one of the departments that um, was successful in being able to maintain ensuring that um, you know those uplightings or those the schooling and and certification yeah. courses and trainings um, were maintained was was CAPSM. But you still have immigration, customs, the prison, uh, our court of guardianship, you know, in, in every aspect. Even our probation department requires the ability to have refresher courses, etc. But we need a proper institution for that. You may recall that many years ago, uh, our officers went to Curacao, to the ORV institution, the police school, and they did their certification and trainings there. That relationship was severed um, somewhere in the past by one of our former ministers ministers of justice and the justice academy was established here um, that in itself though between uh, being damaged and destroyed by the hurricane as well as it has having its own accreditation challenges um, you know really left education in limbo for our law enforcement so right here in in the Colby area uh, where the Surama building once stood, right. we that that property belongs to the Ministry of Justice, and that is where we've identified we would like to have the um, Law Enforcement Institute of Saint Martin established. Um, just as Carousel has it, just as Aruba has it, of course, just as the Netherlands has many, um, but within the kingdom, all territories should have an institution where your law enforcement officers uh, and administrative staff alike, because we tend to forget that the administrative staff is just as important, right? right? Um, they need trainings as well. Uh, this is an institution they would go to to be able to allow um, for themselves, those who are coming in new and those who are already in the organization to, to receive proper educational material and training to be the best that they can in the service line that they're in. When you're a Minister of Justice mm -hmm. and there's an incident, do they call you right away? Or? You're notified. You're yeah. definitely notified. But there's a fine line between you know where your, your service execute their um, authorized um, uh, duties, mm -hmm. and then you have the minister who should always remain a certain distance from that, um, because when there are certain decisions that need to be made and need to come up the ranks, you need to be able to have a clear mind, no biasness, um, no, no, no contamination to the information that you're getting so that you can make a sound decision and give the support where it's needed. But you're definitely notified okay. um, when these sorts of incidents That's happen. because the, the current Minister of Justice, he pops up immediately at places that I, I was wondering, is that... To each you know, his or her own. <laughs> <laughs> to, each, to each his or her own. I mean, he has a background in law enforcement, so I guess that is still within him. But I, I, I like to keep the distance respectfully. Let them do their jobs. Let them do their jobs. Mm -hmm. We all have our roles to play, yeah. and so I am a, of the position that I like to allow um, the officers and management to do their job and then allow it to escalate up. If and when I am needed, I am there. No, but you leave it up to them. Until absolutely, have, yeah. absolutely. And that had, had, that had been my approach, um, Mr. Gibbs, uh, throughout my service mm. in those four years as well. Um, there were, and, and to my understanding, even now again, there are moments where officers are told not to do this, don't go here, you're not allowed to do this. I tell the officers, I tell the departments, I tell management, do your jobs. Just do it correctly. Mistakes are made at times, and we use those opportunities to fix ourselves, fix our policies, fix our procedures, because certain procedures, et cetera, have been challenged, and um, the ministry has lost for it, but it gave us opportunity to realize, okay, that it's not done the proper way, let's adjust, right? Um, so I never look at uh, what you would call um, a bad experience or encounter as just that. I look at it as an opportune moment to be able to fix the situation so that going forward, your service is better to the community holistically. 
Um, so I, I always keep that fine line and I always tell officers, go and do your job. You, that's what we're paying yeah. them for, right? <laughs> so you're still running as number seven on the National Alliance list. I right? am. That's the second oldest party in Somalia after DP, I think, right? Yeah. I believe yeah. we rank uh, there, starting with SPM, SBA, and working up our, ourselves to where we are today in National Alliance. We're still the largest party, however. Yeah. So how, how has it been? Um, because, you know, the politics is changing so much. Mm -hmm. We have all these different parties, and uh, like you mentioned, when it comes to any, it was... SPM, then SPA, mm -hmm. now NA. Mm -hmm. I think the, only in the last time, I think DP changed some, some different name, or UDP is whatever. Yeah. But that was more like a merger, though, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, right. Yeah. But so when you look at the politics today, mm -hmm. right, and what the NA stands for, and mm -hmm. say what the others stand for, you notice also one political party have a lot of the children from other parties. And I see a change in the NNO where there are more younger people. How do you feel about it? Oh, we, we have to evolve. Yeah, um, it, it, is, it is great when you can have your founders, mm. your elders um, in the background as well, giving that guidance. Um, you just got to be receptive to it, mm. <laughs> of course. Um, but there's a lot of a wealth of experience, I should say, in, mm. in persons like um, William Marlin, you know, the great William Marlin in terms of um, his knowledge, his experience, and the great things that he can take uh, account for doing for St. Martin. Um, the National Alliance is recognized as the People's Party in terms of ensuring that social uh, care is there, providing schools, housing, fixing roads. That's what the National Alliance is, is definitely historically known for. Um, and, and of course, we venture into other areas. Education is another large aspect um, for the National Alliance, very, very important to us. Um, we know that we have some work to do. To, to, to do there where the education aspect is concerned in terms of restoring the relationships that we have with teachers, but as, as well as putting a little bit more focus into our whole educational structure. Because as you mentioned, in terms of children, you know, the education that is being provided to our children is very important in terms of the product that we will have in the end when, we, when they become adults. But um, seeing a lot of young people venturing into politics uh, holistically or overall, um, is something very important that needs to happen. Okay. Politics on, in, in, in general has a very negative stigma to it. A lot of people try to stay away from it because it's, it's, it's dubbed as a very nasty uh, arena to be in. But we the people make it what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right now we can see that politics in St. Martin has changed drastically. You know, on my drive coming here, I was having a conversation with one of my colleague uh, candidates and, you know, he was expressing to me that... Um, you know, he recalls being in this in this game for so long, and um, particular Unde Malin, um, supporting his dad um, in this whole com campaign trail all these years, and with other political affiliates on other parties, they would literally come together in their different shirts and shake hand and you know talk about the unity that we have in St. Martin. Even though it's politics, even though yeah we're competing for seats, even though it's a race, it was still done with unity. It was still done with love. So to see the dynamics in our politics changing today is quite um, disheartening. It is, it's a sad space to be in, and I'm really hoping that at some point in time, mm. this whole uh, atmosphere will shift in a, back into a more loving and unified um, yeah. um, um, I, way. I hope so where too. we are right now, is it's really not I hope so too, us. It's, it's <laughs> but we're changing, we're evolving. And if you look at the last four years mm -hmm. and what's happening, it's no longer a family affair where we as St. Martiners are running for political office. We now have the children of other immigrants from other countries. They come with a whole different background. And I think that too is changing the way going forward in terms of politics in mm -hmm. St. Martin and how we deal with each other. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I totally agree with you, but we as, as human beings with wisdom, <laughs> with knowledge, uh, it is really up to us 
to not allow it to go in the direction that it is. Um, and how does that happen? If you are in specific chats, if you are making certain statements online, if you are forwarding negative and harmful, uh, violent material, right. um, you are participating directly. It's not even indirectly. You are participating directly in contributing to that negative uh, atmosphere that you're referring to in terms of the changes. And I do agree with you that, you know, we do see um, a difference in in the way of doing things and this could come from different countries different cultures different you know we we are a very welcoming uh, uh community but we have to be careful about it and we have to be honest with ourselves about it all right in case you're just joining us this is speaking about everything on youtube facebook and on hot 99.9 .9 fm radio you've seen the former minister of justice uh miss anna richardson on speaking of everything when we come back we're going to continue with her right here, so please stay with us. We are vibrant, expressive, warm, and diverse. Together, we conquer, and now we expand into new horizons, giving you more of the best. Introducing our new Bank of Matico Plus with wider acceptance, purchase protection, and enhanced security. Whether you're online, traveling, or in paradise, experience more with Windward Island Bank. Bank of Matico Plus, more of the best. My guest right here on Speaking of Other Thing is the former Minister of Justice, uh, Miss Anna Richardson. She's here with me. Let me ask you this: um, just, When you Minister of Justice, they give you a gun? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you carry. Is it, of course. <laughs> you do. Yeah, this, it's automatic, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier before the break about your party, mm -hmm. and it's a party that look at the social issues, right? Correct. But when you look at Samarana today, uh, we've seen more poverty, and in fact, we've seen even more changes in, in, in the last uh, four years with, with some of your party uh, members putting priority on everything else except to the social issues? Thank you for that question. Um, again, you know, earlier I was mentioning to you about us being honest. One of the things we have to be honest is that St. Martin has grown in population far greater and far faster than I think that we were able to manage. When we look at our housing ability, schooling ability, jobs, um, healthcare, we are far greater in population than we can actually handle. Um, and this is something that persons get quite, um, you know, it's a sensitive topic because we have a lot of persons that come to St. Martin, fall in love with St. Martin, and then they don't want to return to wherever they're vacationing from, right. you know, um, and they make life in St. Martin. And whilst we welcome everyone, I always speak about the importance of us knowing that everything is done the right way. Um, persons can get offended by that, but you are speaking about your concerns when it comes to, um, you know, our poverty rate, etc. Life can get hard. It can get hard when it's a challenge for you to find proper uh, employment. It can get hard when, you know, housing is, is very expensive. And we know that we speak about the cost of living in St. Martin yeah. is quite expensive. Um, and that is something that needs to get tackled. Every, every so often or during elections, we hear persons talking about uh, price control, um, the cost of living, um, wages, you yeah. know. And, and I always say is one thing to increase one's wage or, or wages, but if we don't do something about pricing, then as your income goes up, so will pricing, right? right? And so you're always gonna have that inflation and, 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 and you will never, will never see it that it's fair. Um, and so even on this campaign trail, another aspect that I want to look at is our two aspects, um, specific platforms, and that has to do with consumer protection I believe we need a Consumer Protection Bureau on St. Martin. Um, the laws are there. It's just about getting the bureau established. It's going to take some committed steps. So you want it to be regulated by government? No. 
not by government. I do believe that, and I want to be very careful how, how we structure this, because right. I don't believe that the Consumer Protection uh, Bureau should have any political interference. Huh? So I want to be very careful with that. Pretty much like the Integrity Chamber, mm -hmm. what the Consumer Protection Bureau does is ensure that um, the best business practices are being executed on St. Martin, be it with service providers, be it with retailers, whomever is providing mm. any type of service or product in exchange for money yeah. from a consumer, that the consumer is getting that best value Could that be for their the money. Chamber of Commerce, if possible? Um, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we did have some conversations about it. I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, one of the things that I championed and I held two very yeah. successful conferences with is the anti counter to fit a uh, conference and intellectual property protection. And you spoke about it last time. We did, we right, did. Yeah. And so you would understand that my drive when the Consumer Protection mm. uh, Bureau is concerned stems off of that because what's important to St. Martin is very important um, and what our, what our consumers or our communities are exposed to in terms of their health. Uh, is also very important. What we are um, consuming, digesting, uh, all of this plays a factor into right. how our healthcare is also if affected, right? And we have to understand the links where that is where that is concerned. So the consumer protection is one aspect that I, I'm really driven in, in this on this campaign trail to see come to life. Uh, another aspect is the fact that our rent tribune, for example, um, the law is there, but it is not a law that gives them much authority. So if you as a landlord or you as a tenant have an issue with either or, uh, oftentimes you have to locate money now to go to the courts to be able to combat each other when the rent tribune should technically be um, uh, equipped to have a hearing, understand what happens, and makes a decision that stands. Settle the dispute right there. Right there. Oh. So their legislation needs to be updated. That's a pursuit of mine as well to be able to work on that so that both landlords and tenants have a fair ground to be able to deliberate with each other when the relationship may go south. Um, but also, you know, we have persons within our communities that are very destructive. You know, there should be a database that, that registers individuals that might go from one apartment to the next apartment being destructive, one apartment to the next apartment not paying their rent. But same way, you have what we call slumlords, individuals that have properties that they don't want to invest in making it, right. you know, um, um, equipped and right, safe for humans to reside in, but then they, they're asking for really high prices in rent. So we need a balance there, you know what I mean? Um, so in my pursuit on this campaign trail, those are at least two of the pillars that I am pushing to be able to have those legislations in the interest of social balance. Yeah. yeah, protecting our communities. Because housing is a big issue. Housing is a huge issue. Husband, as you said, there's 6,000 people and on waiting lists. List. Exactly, wow. exactly. But that all comes from um, the influx of persons that we have that makes St. Martin their home. Yeah. Uh, and that in itself needs to be, you know, with border management reg properly regulated. Um, we also have reproduction. We have a lot of people that are reproducing, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and you grow up and then you need your own housing. So when you talk about border management. <laughs> As Minister of Justice, yes. what happened there, because we hear the Dutch always want to control entry to the island, mm. was that taking place? Because no, I, I wouldn't say that it is, but what the Dutch has, hmm, I don't really like to use the term Dutch because we're all the Dutch, Dutch government, so the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, what the Netherlands has done is brought us um, that support. So we have, mm. let's say, the um, Mashuches on the island who gives us that support our, at our borders. There are certain resources that we need. Um, we had the ORVK um, project, forgive me, the acronym is what I remember, the actual name not, um, but that was a project that I even came in as minister and met. And that project is about, uh, was about, and I think we have a 2.0 going on right now, again, funds that were provided by the Netherlands to St. Martin to upgrade our um, border management, be it system, be it immigration, Coast Guard, um, customs departments, and even, even our police to some extent. But mm. having these multifaceted organizations working together to be able yeah. to protect. But one of the things I want to mention to you is that before uh, leaving office, 
I had about a year and a half that I was working with an institution, Gamma, out of uh, Aruba, mm. um, because they have a, a very good, and their, their border management system has been in operations for over 30 years. Uh, here in St. Martin, we were having a very hard time with our border management we were using um, that had been um, an issue for quite some time and was not tackled. I mean, there were moments where persons were being um, checked into the island departed the island but then when you go back to the system you're seeing where they came in but you're not seeing where they left however you can see where they came back in okay. how do i see that you came back in if i don't see that you actually left you see what i mean so there were a lot of hiccups we were experiencing with the previous system and then we have now adapted the radix system and that is one of the things that i made sure was done while i was in office so now our border system especially at our ports airport and and the harbor works optimally right I'm very very That's proud about hear. that of course um, so there were a lot of efforts happening uh, um, within the ministry to be able to ensure that we are managing our system what we have not arrived to yet is 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 the ability to let's say someone says they're coming into the island to spend two weeks or a month vacation um, we do not yet have a system available where our officers can literally go to your address and say hey listen today is the 31st day of your 30 day allowance wants to be here you know or your two days past due when you're supposed to leave and make sure follow up on persons for that um, well, you, that that is yeah. that is a great undertaking that mm -hmm. we do not have the, the resources to do that so you rely on persons to be honest um, when it comes to you know immigration hold processes and so forth people get very offended about it but we are no different to any other territory that ensures that their population is properly managed um, and you are concerned about that, that waiting list of 6,000 plus, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you're concerned about our social ailments, about uh, lack of jobs, lack of housing, issues with schooling, being able to hold the capacity. Do we need more schools? I think we do. And preferably not in the school district because that traffic right. issue <laughs> is, is a problem for us. So I do believe we do need more um, schools to be built on St. Martin because a lot of our children as well within our communities are not attending schools. Um, some of them aren't attending because their parents are fearful of immigration seen in and not on the island um, legally, but even as minister, and I will say it here and now, the immigration department is there to help and to process, okay? Um, persons, yes, get denied, but you always have that appeal ability, and that appeal opportunity or that window gives you the opportunity to understand why your application was denied, and that is a moment when you get to fix it, you know? Um, but a lot of person aren't, persons aren't necessarily aware of the fact that they can appeal uh, the decision with the immigration department. And I fought that on the language. Yeah. Um, we have many discussions about understand. English. Yeah, we, yeah we, we are all the time. We are. Yeah, I, I have to give you uh, <laughs> went by really one, quickly. one minute in closing. Anything you want to say to your supporters? or? Okay, thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, having me on your show. I really appreciate that. And of course, we are in the political season. We are campaigning and I am proposing my person, Anna Elaine Richardson, number seven on the National Alliance slate. And I'm asking you to remember the hard and dedicated work that I have executed as Minister of Justice. I am here, I am capable, and I'm asking you to cast your vote for me on August 19th, 2024. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And Elaine Richardson. That's me. I like the middle name. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, Thanks. much success. Thank you All so right. much. And that's it for now on Speaking of Everything on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. See you next time. Take care. Bye.